Okay, so this is the first lesson for Chapter 5, Lesson 1, Perpendicular and Angle of Bisectors. Today our objective is to prove and apply theorems about perpendicular and angle bisectors. First, a couple of vocabulary terms. Equidistant means when a point is the same distance from two or more objects. And a locus is a set of points that satisfies a given condition. For example, a circle is a locus of points equidistant from the same point on a plane. So if we were to draw a circle, it's equidistant from the same point on the plane. Those equidistant parts are the radius, or radii. So a couple of theorems. First of all, the perpendicular bisector theorem states that if a point is on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So here we have a point X is on the perpendicular, which is there, bisector, so that's here, of segment AB. So therefore, if I were to draw lines or segments from X to the endpoints, my conclusion would be XA is congruent to XB. Okay? The next is the same type of theorem except for it's the converse of what we just did. So this states, if a point is equidistant from the endpoints of a segment, then it is on the perpendicular bisector of that segment. So here we have what looks like a, an isosceles triangle, and XA is equidistant from XB. So if I were to draw in the perpendicular bisector, it would go right through point X. So this would be the perpendicular bisector. So we can say if we add another point here, C, we can say that uh, XC is perpendicular to AB, and we can also say that AC is congruent to CB because it's the perpendicular bisector. Okay? Next section angle bisectors. So, first of all, we have the distance, an angle bisector theorem. So the angle bisector, if a point is on the bisector of an angle, so here we have point C on the bisector because this is congruent to this, so we know it's a bisector, then that point is equidistant from the sides. So if it's equidistant, it needs to come down at a right angle. So this is congruent to this. So if we were to give this extra names, we would say this was A and this was B we could say that CA is congruent to CB, okay? And the converse of this is the converse of the angle bisector theorem. If a point is on the interior of an angle and equidistant from the sides. So here we have point C on the interior and it is equidistant from the sides of the angle then it is on the bisector. So I could write, draw an angle or a, a, a line here and have that. And I could say then that angle APC is congruent to angle CPB. So these two are congruent here. So let's do a couple of problems where we use the all of these four different theorems here. So here I have four different problems. And first of all, um, this is the perpendicular bisector theorem. Um, since I know that this is on the perpendicular bisector, I know that 2n plus 9 equals 7n minus 18. And if I solve for n, I get n equals 5.4. Um, and if I say that I want to find PR, I forgot to put those in, so I want to find PR. So PR equals 2 times 5.4 plus 9, and that ends up being 19.8. Okay? 
Uh, the second example here, we have the converse. So since these two are equal to each other, we know that this is on the perpendicular bisector. So if this length, half of it is 16, then the whole length is 16 times 2, or 32. Oops, 32. Okay, the next one is the angle bisector theorem. Since M is on the angle bisector, we know that it's an angle bisector because we're told here that the two um, angles are equal, then we know that this also has to be 13, so ML is 13. And lastly, if we have D is equidistant from the edges, then we know that these two angles have to be equal. So if we're told that angle ABC, this whole entire angle here is 112, then angle ABD would be one half of that divided by two, which is 56 degrees. Okay, so there's some examples of how you would use these four different theorems. Okay, thanks for watching.